Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So in this episode, we are going to knock out start to finish the entire floor pan install of our 1965 Pontiac GTO. Now, if you watched the previous episode, you guys know it's completely gutted. It's ready to go, ready to start cleaning up and get ready to install a new pan. Now, we also have some pretty serious rust issues that we're going to have to address. Those of you guys that are out there that are doing this, especially on a 60 year old car, you know, if it be in the Midwest, West Coast, wherever, you're probably going to have some corrosion and rust issues to deal with. Now, we have some pretty severe stuff on our A-pillars and also on our firewall. I'm going to show you guys and walk you through exactly how to patch that and what that's going to look like here in the end. So, I'm going to walk you guys first through this and show you exactly how we're going to approach this install. We're first going to start off and we are going to clean up front to back each of the rockers. Now, if you guys remember last episode, we went through, we drilled out all of our original factory spot welds. We also had to cut um, and kind of grind down these spot welds on the inside. We're going to have to grind all this stuff flush. We're going to hammer dolly it, straighten it all out, so that way we have a really nice surface to weld to with our new floor pan. Um, then we're going to move on to the back here. And if you guys remember in the last episode, um, you know we cut this seam right here flush back to that kind of thicker support bar that's on our trunk pan. In the next episode, we're going to be installing that trunk pan. But here on this brace, we were able to save that one. This one on this side is, was not savable, and we actually are gonna have to cut a little bit more off because it's super thin, and you can see pretty much straight through it, right? So if you guys try to weld on that, it's gonna burn through, and uh, you're gonna have some big issues. So we'll cut that back probably another inch or so, and then uh, address that. Now, our biggest issues are definitely up here. Let's start with the, the firewall section. Now, they do make patch panels that cover the inside. The trans tunnel are not included in those patches, but it's, it's all of these flat sections here, kind of up onto the firewall, about that far. So with this one, we're gonna cut it out. We're gonna see exactly what we're dealing with. You can see this being the worst spot on the firewall. We've also just got some thin metal, just some rusty metal in general. Now, with the floor pan section that we cut out, I think I'll actually be able to recut it and use a lot of that with installing some of those patch pieces. By far, our biggest issue on this and the most time consuming piece is gonna be on the A-pillars. So let's start off with the worst stuff. Right away, you guys see how terrible that looks? Okay, so your A-pillar, you've got the outer here, the outside of the car, there's a seam right here in the center, and then there's an intersection here. We're gonna basically have to cut this entire thing out, weld in a brand new piece. We're gonna to have to fix this lip along here. Now, those of you guys, you 65 GTO guys know, they do not make an aftermarket A-pillar for a 65. They make them for 66, 67, probably pretty close. We may have to buy one just to, uh, to address the, uh, the issues up here. So, you know, we'll see once we get into it and uh, we'll kind of make that call at that point. Now on this side here, it's a lot of the exact same stuff. The A-pillar is not nearly in its worst shape on this side, but along the bottom here, this is actually part of the old fender that's, that's left on the car there that's in pretty rough shape. Our rockers, we're gonna have to patch some of these spots here. The only issue that's bad in the entire rocker is just right here. And a lot of times this is where your moisture is gonna settle coming in down through your cowl. It's gonna start accumulating right here in the corner and bam, you end up with that. You end up with that and you end up with that. Oh, one more and that. <laughs> this side's still bad. It's not definitely not the worst of the two but it's still um, you know, one that we're gonna have to address. So let's start off, I'm gonna start grinding. We're gonna clean it up. We're gonna use our flap disc on our grinder, clean up the surfaces, hammer dolly all those, and then we're actually gonna test fit our floor pan. So let's get to it.
right, so real quick, when I say flap disc and what I mean by that, I do not mean cutting disc, okay? These are meant for cutting metal, not grinding metal. You can grind with these, but you run the risk of making cuts into the metal that you're trying to straighten and make good weld um, surfaces with. What I mean by flap disc is something like this. Now, you can get these straight at Harbor Freight. This one that I'm gonna be using is 120 grit. You can get these, I think, in like 60 and 36. Now, it comes with the warning. These will remove a shitload of metal very, very fast, especially when you start getting down to like the 36 and the 60 grits. The 120 is a lot easier to control. It takes off less metal at a time because as you guys know, you do this for a couple hours, you're gonna lean in a little bit harder, take off more material than you want, and then you're gonna end up having to cut out and patch sheet metal. So go with this guy. 120 is a great starting place for cleaning up your welds. So I got all of our outer rockers cleaned up. All the weld surfaces now are nice and flush and ready to weld on. Now I wanna take a look at this firewall here to see the extent of the patches or the patchwork that I'm gonna to have to do along the firewall. And what I like to do, I take a body hammer. You can also take just a Phillips or flathead screwdriver and really start kind of tapping around anywhere you see the thin sheet metal to kind of see exactly how far inboard you're gonna to have to actually make your cuts. So right off the bat, we know these two spots right here. Got another one right here. Got two little ones right here. I don't want to <laughs> hit on that right now. That's where my jack is. Um, but looking here, you know, across the top, obviously we know this is bad right here. But you can see as we start getting up a little bit further into here, and I'll just start tapping on this to show you guys. Okay, <laughs> so this just got a lot bigger here on this side. So you can obviously see we've got thin metal around here and what happens just over time, the moisture, the rain, you know, precipitation, everything, it just settles in the bottom here and you can definitely see some water or some moisture got in here and it just rotted out this side of the floor pan. The passenger side isn't too bad. We got a couple of spots that we're gonna address, but what I'm gonna do is that obviously we're gonna cut this whole seam out. I'm probably gonna go up in here somewhere probably and then cut this straight across and we're gonna make this entire piece here one big patch piece. <clears throat> so the rest of this seam here, you can see, I mean, it's in pretty good shape. Overall, um, you know, all the metal here is thicker. You know, thankfully up higher on our firewall, we don't have a single 
issue here up on the inside, which is pretty awesome. So we won't have to do the entire firewall. So a couple little patches on this side, big patch on this side, but uh, we're gonna cut it out. We're gonna make it right and uh, make it like new again. So let's get that grinding wheel back out and let's get this metal off. So we got all of our pieces cut out. Now let's take a look at what we're gonna do next. Um, first, we're gonna start off by tracing these. Now you guys saw me cut this piece first and then kind of second guess myself. And the reason being, I cut out this patch and then realized that I have a big hole right here, right here. I'd much rather have just one piece instead of having like a bunch of stitches and a bunch of little patches here. We'll just do one nice looking patch. We're gonna flange this across the bottom. We're also gonna try to replicate this shape here to get that as close to original as possible so that way you can't tell. Um, I oversized these a little bit into good metal here on all the way around, and that's just so that way we get nice clean welds. This is all good metal all the way around. Looking at our driver's side, the exact same thing. I mean, you guys can see this is really nice, solid metal um, all the way around here. We're gonna, again, replicate this flange. We're gonna try our best to shape this exactly like how it was originally. And then we've also got on this side at least a, a little bit of a transition here where it works its way up to the trans tunnel. But that should be pretty simple to replicate and uh, should be able to make quick work out of that. Now, steel. Okay, I prefer to stick with 18 gauge um, if possible. 20 is probably about the thinnest that I like to go. It's as close to factory original as possible. 18 to 20 is typically what you find in most older cars like this. Don't go to Lowe's and Home Depot and get 24, 26 gauge material, okay? It's gonna be really thin. Sure, it's easy to shape but it's not gonna look close to factory and you're gonna more than likely have issues. It's not definitely not gonna be as strong either. So 18 to 20 gauge preferably. Find a local steel distributor, make sure it's weldable steel, not galvanized, etc. okay? So yeah, 18 gauge is, uh, is where I would stay with that. So let's go ahead and uh, let's trace these out. We'll get these cut and uh, start shaping. Let's get to it.
All right, guys, and we are just about ready to tack in this floor pan. Before I did that, I know I've just shown a lot of material to you guys, and I wanted to kind of bring you up to speed on everything that was done. So the very first thing that we did, we installed this patch here up on the, the, uh, the front of the rocker panel. Now, as you guys saw, I kind of struggled through that a little bit. I just don't have a ton of uh, metal shaping, metal forming tools, especially like brakes and things that you really need to do something like that. So I reached out to my friends at AMD and they're gonna send me an outer rocker panel because I still have to do the backs of each and then also that other front um, rocker panel on the other side. So could I do it? Probably, but I really, really want it to be perfect and, uh, and they make the best sheet metal there is in my opinion. So after we did that, we cut out this section here on the inside of our door pillars. Now we do have door pillars coming for both sides and I'm probably just gonna section parts of them in because there's definitely they have their strengths and their weaknesses as far as my panels go. But uh, I need that inner piece and uh, I was able to cut this out and do what I can do now and still get that floor pan in there and still have the access down here that I need to get that pan in and still be able to work around it. Um, the other side did not require nearly as much material cut away um, as, the, uh, as the other side. So after that, I took my 415, I painted the insides of my outer rockers front to back on both sides, as you guys saw. And that's all dry and it's ready to go. And we're just about ready to start um, punching our holes in our floor pan. And I wanna show you guys that real quick. It turned out really nice. Now, as I mentioned, this is the stage and the step that you wanna do everything you can not to lay on your back the rest of the build, okay? Spend as little time on your back as possible when you're building these cars. And so that means poor 15ing this floor pan now. Now, is it overkill? Probably. Is it necessary? Probably not. But does it look good? You're goddamn right it looks good. It looks like it's ready to actually roll across the floor at Barrett Jackson, to be honest with you. It's in high gloss black and it turned out really, really nice. So from here, if, if you guys remember back, so we had to drill out all these spot welds that are along the bottom here of our inner rockers. We're gonna go through, we're gonna punch all these holes across that with our Eastwood punch flange tool. We've also got here where the rear um, wheelhouses, under here where the trunk pan lays on top of that. So we've got uh, quite a bit of work to still do to prep this pan and get it ready, but uh, it's getting close. This pan's gonna go in tonight. So let's, uh, let's get our holes punched and get it in the car.
you demand that I eternize your name Walk ahead You cover us in shame and I take the blame Living by the rules to which high school blues Walk ahead Alrighty guys, and with that we are all wrapped up with our floor pan install. I guess technically about 95% of the way done. We still have to go back and smooth out and dress out all of our welds. You know, every place around here we're going to take our flap disc, clean those up, so that way it looks as close to original as possible and there won't be any big ugly, you know, booger welds uh, along the bottom there. But uh, we welded our rockers front to back on both sides. We also welded our trans tunnel up and over the entire thing. The back side here I left unwelded just because obviously we're going to put our new trunk pan in here. It's going to sit directly on top of that back floor pan and most likely I'll end up, end up having to jack up um, the back of the uh, floor pan here to meet that trunk pan. Um, underneath everything went really well. You guys saw that I used the jack um, with that piece of wood to kind of bring up the inner rocker and outer rocker to the exact same level. It's a really nice touch, it looks original and uh, it fits really really nice. Um, so I think with that guys, I'm going to wrap up this video. I'm going to go inside. I think I'm going to have a nap, maybe a beer or two, grab some food and uh, come out here and start bracing our trunk and getting it ready to tear out. So stay tuned. And uh, if you have not subscribed, of course, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well. If you like what I'm doing here and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.